Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are for another week of fantastic questions. We've got plenty to get out today. We'll get to them in just a moment. But before we do, don't forget a couple of very important things you have to do. First, you can help grow the kendo population. I think we've already grown it to like 2,741 people so far, probably, that have started kendo just from you guys liking, sharing, subscribing, and going down there, writing a comment, using the word Kendo, say like this is such a brilliant Kendo video, or something like that, so that the YouTube robots that are looking for people around the place to do Kendo, see it and say, yeah, there's a Kendo video, show it to that person over there. And we get more people doing Kendo, okay? Thanks to you doing that, right? So go and do it. Most importantly though, support the channel. Keep these videos coming. I've got more content on the way. I've got some more instructional videos. I know it's been a while since I put instructional videos up. They're coming, I promise. All right, and I've got more on the way too. If you like what we do, shop at kendostar.com. It's a win-win because you support the channel and you get the best kendo equipment in the known galaxy. We are the best kendo equipment website ever devised in the history of the human race. Now, of course, I would say that because I own a place. Of course, I'd say that, but everybody agrees with me. All right, you're going to shop with us in the end anyway. So skip, skip wasting your money somewhere else before you decide, no, I should have gone to Andy in the first place. Should have gone to Kendall Star in the first place. Should have listened to Andy. Don't waste your time. And come straight to us in the beginning, kendallstar.com. That's what everybody does. Let's be honest. <laughs> okay, let's get to these questions, shall we? Right, okay. Um, first one. Uh, hi, Andy. My Kendo Ryan question for this week. What is your take on wearing come on on the door? Is it okay just to choose one that you think looks nice? Should one go deeper into the meaning of the symbols? Is it appropriate to have one even before passing Shodan? I really like the idea of personalized symbol representing something meaningful to myself, but I don't want to come across strange or presumptuous to others. Thank you a lot for the content and high quality products at kendostar.com. Thank you. Okay, so there's a couple of sort of things on this. So look, come on is like the Japanese family crest. Sometimes you see it in the top corner of the door, top sort of, um, uh, yeah, the top sort of corner of the door near the, the minute. I think it goes on the, the right hand side as you're wearing it. If memory serves correct. Um, <laughs> um, so... It's a family crest, okay? It's a family crest. So it means that it's associated to someone's family. Um, so it's a bit strange to pick one at random and just stick it on there. Um, I get it. They do look pretty cool. Um, I have a couple of door with it on. Um, and they are the the family crest of uh, my, my wife's family, um, which my, my father, father-in-law gave me permission to wear. Um, so, you know, that's, that's why I wear it, uh, on some of my door. Um, and I, re I really like, I really like it. It's kind of special to me. Um, but that's a bit different to just pick them out at random, I think. Um, I think even what I'm doing is a bit sort of borderline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, at least I do have a sort of connection to the family, especially like, like the Japanese idea of marriage is that your two families become the same family. So, um, you know, and I obviously not being Japanese, I don't have a common on my own. So, yeah, I was I was allowed to wear that one. Um, so, you know, mm, it's a good idea to pick one out. It's up to you. Is it a big deal? Not really. Not really. Um, to be honest, I mean, most people like most the <laughs> most of the people that get upset about you doing it are not Japanese people. <laughs> 
um, from what I've seen. <laughs> Certainly not in Japan anyway, um, to be fair. I don't think anyone really take any notice of it. Uh, so if you think it's cool, fair enough. Um, is it, is, it'd be better to use something that was more appropriate to yourself than sort of, yeah, picking out a common at random. But, you know, like I say, it's not the end of it. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. People take stuff like that a little bit too seriously as well. So, at the end of the day, a lot of Japanese people that use them have just sort of picked out one that they like as well. It's not that, it's not that every family in Japan is traceable back to a noble family that would have had its own come on in, uh, in the, in the sort of feudal times. So, you know, people have sort of picked out their own too. Um, that is a thing. So, uh, there is that, um, the, uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it matters whether it's before or after you pass shield and it's nothing to do with what grade you are. So if you want to do it, do it. If you, if you think it's a, you know, if you're a little bit apprehensive, then maybe just hold off on it. Okay. Next one. Andy, I have a question for the next kind of rant. If you don't mind in my studio, I'm finding what, uh, that when I'm using Tanuchi, my Shinai is bouncing quite far down, then coming back up. As I'm watching demonstrations by higher grade Kendoka, I'm noticing that their cuts are nice and controlled. Is it something that comes over time? We practice them. I putting more pressure on than necessary or something else. Please let me know uh, if you need me to el elaborate at all at this end and I'll give it a go. Okay. So I understand what you're saying. Um, I don't think it's a massive problem as long as you're not sort of finding pain. There's different ways of doing it. Some people have quite the big sort of bounce in the cuts when they do. So really what you don't want to do is like bounce it back into the next foodie cupboardy. But it's like a kind of like this, you know, this sort of thing. I don't think I don't think that's the end of the world. There's lots of senses that teach to do that as well. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. I used to do something like that a bit, actually, to be fair. These days I don't, but um I used to and actually I've my my I think it can be a useful way to do somebody if you've got weak tenuity. I've been working with my daughter quite a lot about that. She 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 struggles a bit with the tenuity because she's quite a small um framed person. So um you know, it's 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 a method of stability that I've been using to teach her a little bit. Um so I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't give it too much thought. You'll 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 get the hang of it and find find a you know find a way that suits you better as you as you get more and more practice and it'll probably change over the years too. So don't worry about it too much. Okay, next one. Can you elaborate on the purpose of each position and what play style suits them best when team she I hmm. So uh it depends, right? Okay, let's 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 have a look, right? So standard Shi'ai has has five members in the team. There's others, there's others, some have seven, some have three, some have like 35. It depends, all right? But your standard setup is simple. Jiho, Chu Kang, oops, Chu Kang, Uksho, and Tai Sho. Okay, they're your standard, your standard, you know, uh, team order. You have this be number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Okay, so, um, generally the same boy is like uh, the same boy is obviously the first match. What you really want that player to do is to be able to go out and set the mood, do your best to win. Um, it's not um, you know, the 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 kind of the real point getter. Um, and then the idea is that they're, they're going to go out there and set the pace. So you really want someone that's good, good. It's going to go out there and fight to get, to get a, a good solid win, preferably two points, um, to, to set the tone of the Shi'ai. Uh, you, and obviously, you know, a, a proactive type of player is useful for that. Right. Um, Jiho is usually like, um, what, what Jiho needs to do is they, they kind of, they're a similar role to the Senpo, actually, uh, in that what they're going to do is hopefully they're going to take that momentum that the Senpo has created and, and move it to, you know, and pass it along the line uh, and retain it. So, again, hopefully they're going to they're going to go out and get, get a couple of points and, 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 and help hopefully seal the deal early doors. You know what I'm saying? So you want a similar player to Senpo. Their role isn't quite as crucial. It's, be quite, it's quite harder to come back. Um 
from 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 your first player losing than it is if your first player wins and your second player loses um like on a kind of mental level um so you know um essentially the jihoi is is, is is similar to simple but often you'll use somebody that might not be quite as experienced in it um in that in that position but it depends i mean i'm talking in a traditional sense by the way like in how team shi in japan generally works in europe it's a bit different and um, there's a bit of a different dynamic at like the european championships and stuff like that and you know people tend to be a bit more flexible or have to be a bit more flexible because people use the team order in a different way tactically um so sometimes you have to be a little bit um it's not just in it's not just in in europe that they do that but i'm talking in the sort of standard traditional sense anyway um so that's your, your jiho and then your chuken your chuken is like your kind of um halfway taisho right so like your chuken is a really important player all right your chuken is a really po- important player it has to be someone that's that's reliable uh stable someone that's either going to hopefully like tie up the match, finish, and when I say tie up, I mean finish it off, go out there, get, you've got, your Senpo's done the job, Jiho's done, done the job, Chuken goes out there and wins the match for you, and then your Fukushio Taisho have, have not got too much pressure on them. Um, and they, they can, they can secure the win for you. Um, or it might be the opposite. It might be the opposite. They might have to turn the match around. Your Senpo, Jiho, don't manage to get the points they needed to get. Maybe they even lost the matches. So at this point, you're losing. Your Chuken has to be able to go out there and turn it around uh, so you can get yourself back in the game. Because uh, if, if your Senpo loses, your Jiho loses, and then your Chuken loses, you're, you're out, right? You're finished. Whereas if you sh- your Senpo or Jiho lose their matches, your Chuken turns it round, manages to get a win, then you you're back in the game. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's really important for the Chuken. Fukushou is a similar situation to the Jiho. Fukushou has to take um take uh you know that momentum from the Chuken. Essentially, the the Hukushou is a, a really interesting position because they can be they can sometimes be put they're usually they're put in a position of where the match is tied is sorted already finished or they've got to do some work. So they have to be the type of player that can do the work when you need to need them to. So someone you can sort of rely on in that regard. Um, that's what they need to be. Uh, and then your Taisho needs to be the, the sort of player that's, you know, often matches come down to the last match. All right. Often a very, you know, when, when teams are all very closely matched in skill, you might the first four matches might just end up being a draw. So you or or it might come down to, you know, a point in it between the two teams. Um. So the tie show is a really important position. It has to be someone that can go out there and definitely win the match for the team. Um. So it's quite it's it's you know it's a special sort of player that can play the tie show. They need to have the right mentality, um, as well. So yeah, that's that's that. Um. Okay, uh, hello Andy Fish Sense. I'm currently first Q uh, and we'll have a chance to grade for Shodan in November. I have some concerns though. I play at university level in my country. There are a lot of unreasonably good practitioners at Shodan level because of many of them decide to stay Shodan and not grade for Nidan or wait super late, uh, maybe because of COVID, to grade for Shodan and have tons of experience. I'm a little scared even though I'm believe I could pass come November. I feel like I might get annihilated in competitions and tournaments when competing within that division. Do you think I'm still good? Uh, I should still go for it or wait a little longer until I'm comfortable to grade? Okay. So this sometimes happens at these lower levels. And, you know, when you're in your position, your sort of point of view here is super, super relatable. Um, You know, it, it, it does. It, I understand why you feel this way. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is those people that have been like just staying staying at Shodan for ages, either like not grading for whatever reason, they're not as good as they're not as good as you actually think they are. Um they just act a little bit cocky because they've been doing it uh, cocky is probably the wrong word to be fair, but they act a little bit more confident because they've been doing kendo a bit longer. But their their actual kendo is not that much better because it doesn't progress that far. Um there's nobody who's shodan and has been shodan for for let's say thirty years and is is 
like on the same kendo level as someone who's like godan or rokudan doesn't work like that kendo doesn't work like that if you don't walk along the grading path your your kendo doesn't progress um so uh that's that's the same at these levels too um so here's the thing um yes you should go for the grading because first off it doesn't matter either the grading uh panel will be looking at you uh, and whether you deserve to pass the grade or not. So I'm sure you will be fine. Um, and I think you'll probably do better in the tournaments and competitions than you than you probably expect to. Just don't be intimidated by it. Just, all right, it's sure done, so what? Right, you know, um, it doesn't matter how long, actually, it doesn't matter how long somebody's been doing it, um, to be fair. Uh, you know, I, I know there's people that have been doing Kendo a lot longer than I have, and they're sort of stuck at sort of, Nidan Sandan level um so you know it's not that they're unreasonably good they're probably just a little bit better than the average Shodan but it's not by far and and it's not um it's not like out of reach of you there's nobody there's nobody that's Shodan that's playing at like Yondan level either I mean there might be there might be if they've been there but they're not playing at Godan or Godan level I'll tell you that so yeah you're fine don't worry about it too much all right i'm not the answer to a lot of questions today but i think honestly you'll be fine yeah uh last week i had my first tournament uh taitoku is that is, i don't know how that word's supposed to be whether it's taitoku or taitoku taitoku i don't know is that a place taitoku maybe i don't know um Tokyo Kendo in me. Um, okay, cool. Would like to ask uh, you to take a look and potentially share your thoughts as possible best grads. Yeah, sure. Uh, I can do it in the Kendo analysis series um, video, the, sorry, feedback series. Um, send me an email, uh, mail at kendostar.com. Yeah, okay. Upload the video to YouTube. Set it to unlisted. If you don't want everybody to see it, do not set it to private because I won't be able to see it. And send me the link, and I'll 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 feature it in um in kind of video feedback. No problem at all. Um. The only thing that I'm a little bit apprehensive about is I don't know what this word means. Um. So if it's if it's like an area and it's like just that area is Kendall in me, then cool. Um. As long as it's like affiliated with the Zen, uh, ZNKR, the All Japan Kendo Federation then I can offer you feedback. If it's like some like branched, if it's like branched off, it's separate and you sort it's like not sort of Kendo as the All Japan Kendo Federation recognize it, uh, then I don't think I'm going to be able to offer you useful feedback because I don't know much about it and I'm not really qualified to talk on that. But anyway, if, if it is, as provided it is, I'm more than happy to. Uh, hi Andy, how come Shinai fittings are always white when they just end up discolouring after the first use? That's a good question. I think it comes down to price. I'm pretty sure that the white leather is the sort of cheaper one. Um, I think they bleach it as part of the sort of processing of it. Um, I don't know the exact answer, but I'm pretty sure that's the reason. Um, it's probably partly tradition as well. It's just that's the way they always do it. I don't think anyone's thought about making it a different colour. Um, or whether it's worth the expense of going to do that. So yeah. Um, I think that's the reason on that front. Um, hi Andy, what's the best way to preserve a bok again? Sanding and uh, using tongue oil. A friend of mine, a friend got me a set of Isinoki bok again from Japan and I want them to last a long time. Well, look, actually bok again don't yet generally require a great deal of care and attention. But yeah, the best thing you can do, um, if it's if it's not varnished already, if it's varnished, it's probably all right. Unless it depends how dry the climate is you're in. If you're in a super dry place, then maybe sand off the varnish and give it an oil as well. Um, but either way, yeah, you can give it a sand uh, only lightly um, and, and give it an oiling every now and again if, if the climate's super dry. Um, I live in the UK where the, the climate's not especially humid, but it's not especially dry either. Um, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't ever done anything with my book. <laughs> Um, what I've done with my book again is I've, uh, um, years ago when I lived in Kumamoto, so about 10 years ago, I sanded down all of the, it's like, it's, it's just a standard red oak book again, sanded off all the, the varnish. I gave it a, a coat of, of some kind of oil. I don't know what it was, probably walnut oil or something, same sort of thing you put on the shinai. 
left it and I've not touched it since. I've just used it for copper. But if you're living in a really dry place, probably better. Okay. Uh, next one, dear Andy, could I ask your advice on how to stay relaxed and ready after you make a strike? One of my bad habits is that my body gets very tense after I hit, especially men. Generally, my kamai is a bit tense still, but the top, uh, this on top of that. My kendo doesn't look natural and beautiful. There's always unnecessary pauses, for example. I tend to leave my hands up high after men. Okay. Uh, I follow and react to my opponent too much, and I'm usually not ready enough mentally to deal with my opponent immediately. Example situation, when I go in for men, miss, and from Super Zeri I go to Hikimen immediately, and I'm, I'm unable to go for an I men at this moment, and I'm still too tense for my initial attempt. I'm second down for reference, thank you. I can show you a short recent Jigego privately if you have time and uh, would it helps understand my habits. Uh, you can send me the video if you want. No problem. I don't mind you doing so. Um, I can imagine what you're talking about. I think it's pretty common for people at your stage. Um, it's a, it's, it's, it's twofold. One, it's, it's footwork. Your footwork needs to improve so that you can respond to your opponents better. But secondly, you need, it's, 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 um, it's me you're sort of a little bit, um, too mentally tense. So you need to relax a little bit more and become acclimatized more to, to these sort of encounters in Kendo. And I know that sounds funny saying to someone who's already second Dan, but it's not like it's, it's going to come with time, but you need to relax a bit more in your cake or mentally. I'm not talking your muscles, your muscles will relax, relax as well, but you're, you're obviously like a little bit too, too highly strung in the in the keg itself so your body's not able to move in the way that you want it to freely and naturally um if you want the the the, the quick fix to this is like an hour of kirikai shen uchikomi um and then start then do keiko after that like tire yourself out so you don't have the energy to uh to to to, to think too much and get too tense but it's not always we're not always able to be to, to get the opportunity to do that. So I understand that that's not that simple either. Um, but that's the best way to fix it. It's like just do tons of Kirikaishi and Uchikomi or something until you're until you're really gasping and then you won't really have the energy to 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 apply to um to tensing up, you know what I mean? But uh but yeah, it's it's more that you're I'm sure it's it's that you're you're tense in your mind more than you're tense in your body. I'm sure you're tense in your body too, but I think that will be fixed by relaxing your mind. It's hard, it's not easy to do, but it'll come with experience and as I say, hard practice will help a lot. Uh next on hand, he recently posted a picture of a con cancer door and I've been thinking of getting one. However, it looks less blue than the picture door on the website. Also, what's the difference between the con cancer and the con tataki? Uh, so yeah, it was a beautiful door that we put up, wasn't it? Really, really nice. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little bit less blue than the pictures on the website. The pictures on the website, got to be honest with you, some of them, like, we do not have access, and even the big suppliers in Japan don't, right, have access to, like, every single door die so that we can take specialist photos of it. Because um, there's just too many, right? There's just too many. Um, so there's... A large number of them are from real photographs and then a large number of them are scanned from the catalogue. So obviously the colour changes a little bit depending on, you know, on the screen that you're looking at on and stuff like that. So, you know, unfortunately, and this isn't just, a, this isn't just with, with Kendo Star, this is every single Borgu website in the world that I've seen so far anyway, is that the the, the pictures of the door die are sometimes, a, you know, a little bit, um, you know, the, the colours can vary a little bit. And then the other thing you've got, especially with the bamboo door, is that they're, they're hand lacquered. So each time the, the finish is slightly different. So there's that as well. It might be that one day one was particularly blue and another day it was not quite as blue. So there's that as well, all right? That's part of getting a sort of hand finished product, um, especially the Bound Boodle. The Con Cancer is the one that was on the video on the on the photo. It's a very very fine matte texture. Um, it's very very fine. Whereas the um Con Tataki is much more um, much more coarse. Um, let me see if I can get some uh, photos for you so we can have a look. That'll be easiest, won't it? Okay, so I've got some photos. So this one is the, this is the Kanstu. As you can see, it's quite like a fine, 
um, finish. It's, it's obviously a rough texture, but it's quite a fine finish. And then this is the Tataki, which is it's much more coarse um, in the way that it's, it's finished off. Um, so if it was, you know, it's kind of like sandpaper, but it's not. But like, it's not as abrasive as that. But it's it's kind of like it. So this would be like a fine grain, and this would be like a a, a coarse grain. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so that's the difference between the two. This is it. This is the black one, and that's the the con one. So you can see that the con is it's not quite as blue as the um as the picture on the website. Um. So yeah, sorry about that. Um looks awesome though it's such a lovely finish i really like it the only thing with these though is that they are a little bit easier to pick up scuffs from the shinai because obviously they've got that sort of abrasive surface um but they do look awesome uh right next one where do you guys who wear 3x find hackerman gear that fit uh kendostar.com email us we can talk to you about um sorting something out that fits you all right email us uh and and we can we can sort it out okay um next one that's a long one okay we've only got two left uh dear Annie, first of all big thank you for the nice content you produce and put up on youtube for us to enjoy and learn from. thank you uh how many will start kendo off this rant do you think i think if all of you guys go down there and you write in the comments right now what a brilliant kendo channel this is yeah or something like that <laughs> um we can at least get another just from this video at least another like i don't know what should we say like uh two two hundred and forty six people probably start kendall from just that probably um so yeah that's what i think um secondly a big thank you for help with the extra big hackerman kendogi specialist you nice etc for me, me and my junior son there you go see see there's 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 testament uh, <laughs> um and finally my question about if it could be it if it could be hand soccer if i touch my opponent's jimbo just above the tsuba with one or both of my kote knuckles as we're both holding our shinai before we get down to proper tsuba zeri uh, with the new three second rule in tsuba zeri and especially against shorter opponents i sometimes find myself using that technique to prolong my time to find an opponent opening for hikiwaza uh, it can happen when my opponent has tried for men but has come too close and i've stepped in and raised my hands to prevent or block the men atta uh, attempt if my opponent's hands are low, I put my hands over my opponent's right hand, Tsuba and Jimbo, and press down or sideways for a reaction that could give me an opening. Sometimes my hands overlap my opponent's hands, but that only uh, so that only my right kote touches the Jimbo, but sometimes my left kote ends up across the Tsuba uh, and touches the Jimbo too. If I don't manage to create an opening, opening within a few seconds this way, I do attempt to get down to proper Tsuba Zeriai before we separate according to the new rules or perform Hikiwaza within three seconds from the proper Tsuba Zeriai has started. Uh, is it Hansoku or just a clever way to bend the rules a bit? Um, what you're describing is probably Hansoku. All right. If you, um, essentially, right, essentially, Right, Tsuba Zeriai. I don't have Tsuba on, I get it right. But in, 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 in effect, Tsuba Zeriai, the Shinai should be like this, all right? And if, if one player is like this, right? And then maybe like this. Like, if it happens brief, briefly through the back and forth of the Shinai, then, um, like, it doesn't matter. But if you're using it, if you're using a position where you've got your hand on top of the tsuba and you're touching the, the jimbo of the sword, it's not really about whether you touch the jimbo of the sword or not, but it's kind of an easy way to think about it. Obviously, if this was a, a sword, you'd, you'd cut your fingers off, but it's, the point is here, this is an unfair position. This gives you an unfair advantage over your opponent. Um, so this is if you if you use this to create opportunities... Um, and it's obvious that you're using this position instead of engaging in correct Tsuba Zeriai, then yes, that's considered Hansoku under unfair Tsuba Zeriai. Um, and about your three second rule thing, like if you get if you get to this position, your three start your three seconds start now. They don't start, they don't wait for you to come to here, right? The three seconds start pretty much when you're this close, all right? And then You've got that time to do it. so you don't get time to waste here and then move to here and then another three seconds um if, if you know what i mean so essentially right you need to try and do proper to the all right every now and again 
you know, this might happen through the back and forth of Shi'ai, but you can't perform your Super Zeri'ai from this position. It is it is definitely hand sloppy. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Uh, right heel pain. What can we do? How can we prevent and treat it? Right, you prevent it by doing Fumi Komi properly, um, but it's I understand that's not easy uh, and it's difficult. And sometimes even if you do it properly, um, like over overuse can do it. But I don't think many of us outside of Japan practice enough for that to happen. Um, granted, granted, outside of Japan, the floor that we practice on isn't always ideal. Um, so if you practice on a on a quite a hard floor, then using a heel pad is the way to prevent it. Um, the uh, but yeah, essentially, if if you're getting pain in your right foot, in your right heel. I mean, I practice in the UK and I practice probably at the moment, it depends, but it could be anything from twice to four to even five times a week. Probably four is probably maximum, to be fair. But twice, two to four times a week I practice. Um, and all, on all sorts of different dojo. I feel the floor's a bit hard. I might slip a heel pad on. Um, but not very often. I hardly ever wear a heel pad. I don't really like wearing them. Um... And I don't experience any heel pain at all. Um, so I don't think... I, I think the way to prevent it is to to work on your Fumikomi technique. Um, and if the floor is a bit hard, wear a, wear a heel pad. To treat it is rest, unfortunately. Um, and if, if, you know, if you're doing kendo every day, then, you know, you, sometimes you just have to wear a heel pad. And you, your Fumikomi technique is okay. Then wear a heel pad until it gets better. <laughs> if it's really bad see a doctor <laughs> obviously so yeah that's it there we go fantastic what a great episode that was some fantastic questions there thank you for joining me today i hope you've got a brilliant weekend planned full of kendall shop at kendall star see you next week Bye bye